President Jones will take off the robe that designates his Juris Doctor status and with assistance from his family, will exchange it with the red robe of Dickinson College. This robe is the only official symbol of the Office of President for the college. There are no other symbols, no rings, no medallions. As an egalitarian community founded in revolutionary times and upon democratic principles, there is no need for such formalities. Benjamin Rush wouldn't have it any other way. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you John E. Jones III, class of 1977, and parent of the class of 2011, and now the 30th president of Dickinson College. follow that. I've been uh, eulogized while alive. <laughs> I've been declared cool several times over. I don't know about that. Such great friends, such uh, tribute. I'm speechless. But let's begin. I thank uh, my dear friend and classmate Jennifer for that wonderful introduction. Marvelous. I want to thank Chairman Doug, Professor Wendy Moffitt, Errol, thank you for your remarks, Chinamaram, unbelievable, Mayor Schultz, and of course, son John, who I years ago, uh, in a kidding way, labeled big time. Uh, good job, big time. And thank you to everybody who uh, made this possible today. Obviously, our talented singers and musicians adding to the beauty of this day and ceremony. And this campus, by the way, the beauty doesn't happen by accident. Uh, around you, you'll see some of our terrific facilities people. I've been looking out my window and watching them. Uh, thank you for making this so special as well, and all of our staff. And I have many to thank today, including our trustees, our wonderful trustees, well represented today, our terrific faculty, our staff, as I said, our students and their families and alumni, all of whom are here for this occasion, including my dear friend, former president and president emeritus, Bill Durden and his wife, Elka. Please let me also recognize my senior staff who surround me on the platform today. No president in the United States is better served by his or her senior staff than I am by mine. I thank you all. It's a great team. And you make me look good every day. I want to say a special thank you to those alumni and students who are serving as delegates for this ceremony and seated in front of me. Your presence is evidence of your deep commitment to our college. I could not be more grateful to you for undertaking this role as well. And I have to say special shout out to Jim Johnston and Jim Gerlach, class of 1977, two Ravensclaw brothers of mine, and two other overachievers. Great to have you here as well. Thank you to all the college and university delegates, dear family, friends, and members of the community who are present. I'm humbled by so many of my former colleagues and friends from my years on the bench who have joined me today. I think of you more often than you can know. And while I love this job, I miss you, and I miss our common calling, as Chief Justice Roberts has called it. I want to give a special thanks to former Pennsylvania Governor, my great friend, Mark Schweiker, who's here with us today, and his wife, Kathy, former First Lady. We hope to be joined by uh, my other dear friend, Governor Tom Ridge, who's had some challenges recently, sent me a beautiful uh, message last night uh, of regrets, but I know that he's watching via live stream. And uh, Governor Schweiker, Governor Ridge, thank you for the impacts you've had on my life. I proudly served in their administrations. To all those who are watching 
on live stream today. Thank you uh, as well. And of course, I want to thank my wife, Beth, and my children, Meg and John, their families, Eric, Katie, Karis, Sophia, and Jack. Jack is the little one. I could not, would not be here without the love and support that they have given to me. Now, I've tried to keep things as interesting as possible for them uh, over time. It may be that I've done a little too well uh, in that. I'm pretty sure that Beth uh, didn't think she was signing up for this uh, some 40 years ago, but there is no question that I'm here today because of her love and support. This day and this stage and this college have profound meaning for me, as has been said. You know, it was 20 years ago today, if you can believe that, that I was sworn in to the day as a federal judge for the United States Middle District of Pennsylvania. That was the honor of a lifetime, one I never imagined that could be surpassed. What I'm feeling today, the experience I'm sharing with all of you, poses a real challenge to that idea. Thereafter, just 16 years ago, I stood on the same stage, this platform, to give the commencement address to the class of 2006. Doing that moved me deeply. And thanks to the urging of then President Bill Durden, who, as I said, sits on the platform with me today, I began to serve this college as a board member, then as board chair, and ultimately now as president of the college. Bill has not just been a dear friend, but he's also been a mentor to me. And I will confess, that when he emailed me back then in January of 2006 and asked me to give the commencement speech, I told Beth, I said, President Durden just emailed me and asked me to give the commencement speech, and, and her uh, retort was, quick answer him before he changes his mind. <laughs> Somewhat humorously, I used to watch Bill work when I join the board. And I used to idly muse, if you can believe this, about what it must be like to be a college president. Now let me emphasize, idly muse. I had absolutely no idea that I'd actually be a college president someday. But there are days when I sit in my office, which is right over there, and I wonder what our founders would think of Dickinson today. You know, this college, this college started four years before the delegates met, the framers met in Philadelphia to form the Constitution, right here. So I wonder about that, and I wonder what they would think of me, about how my vision for the college fits with theirs, and about whether they would think that the college is in good hands. And I've concluded that I would assure them that it is. After all, Dickinson set me on my way, and now I have the privilege of leading this world-class institution with my Dickinson education as my roadmap. This is a special place, a place that has always looked ahead has always used lessons from the past to find new ways to create future leaders who will shape the world. The last several years of living in a pandemic have challenged all of us, but we have persevered. I stand here today as a passionate advocate for the liberal arts and one who is bullish on our future. My friends, I am utterly convinced that Dickinson's best days lie ahead. This is our moment, and I can feel the momentum. I call upon everyone here and on our parents and alumni across the globe to join us as we move Dickinson forward into a future where we are stronger, more innovative, and always true to our mission. The world needs Dickinsonians now, 
individuals who believe in facts, who are willing to confront all sides of an issue, who are willing to make courageous decisions. It needs people who have lived and learned with and learned from those who are different from them. At a time when many believe that our democracy is threatened, we offer a way forward, one lit by intellectual pursuit and the search for truth. When you're a college president, you're frequently asked about your vision for the institution. My vision, my vision is clear. It involves every single Dickinsonian. We will engage the expertise of our entire community, including our alumni and parents, to provide cutting edge, wider world experience for our students that complements our rich liberal arts education. We will invest in spaces that allow for creativity and collaboration to strengthen our community connections. We will make sure that students who are right for Dickinson are not turned away because they can't afford to be here. We will show the world that it is possible to have free expression of ideas and civil discourse. And we will continue to evolve and innovate to provide the very best education for our students as we've done for nearly 240 years. This is why we are here. Over across the street, across High Street, you can see that we've started construction on the John M. Paz Alumni and Family Center, a gathering place for alumni and parents to bring their expertise and life experiences to our students. This exciting initiative is an example of our commitment to engaging our alumni and families like never before. And thank you to John for his leadership gift. Again, a true Dickinsonian and for all those who have contributed to that effort. We will continue to, co to connect alumni and parents with our faculty experts and develop new initiatives. And, and speaking of building, when I walk in the student union, known to Dickinsonians as the hub today, it is almost exactly the same as it was when I was a student here. That is not necessarily a good thing. It even smells the same. <laughs> Today I tell you that the hub will be renovated. It will be brought into the 21st century on our watch. It is my goal and our goal to see that that construction starts by 2024. I want to tell you also that my senior team now includes a chief diversity officer. I have empowered that new diversity officer, Tony Boston, a fantastic individual, by the way, will join us in late October to work tirelessly to see that we practice what we represent, that we are truly an inclusive community in every possible way. I can't wait for Tony to arrive. Dickinson College has always produced students who have literally changed the world. We must make sure, we must make sure that no deserving student is turned away because of need. Last year, we announced a bold goal to meet the demonstrated financial need of any student, any student accepted to Dickinson. And since the campaign launched, we have raised $47 million of our $75 million goal. These gifts are transformative, not just for the students who receive them, but for the individuals who make them. I give you an example. One of those donors is a treasured friend of mine, and Bess, Sam Rose, class of 1958. Sam is Bess's escort today, since I'm up here. It is fairly well known that Sam came close to withdrawing from Dickinson during his time here because he was struggling to afford a Dickinson education. Scholarship grants allowed him to stay and ultimately graduate. And he never forgot that. And as you probably know, Sam went on to earn a law degree 
to get involved in real estate and to be successful in that and everything that he has done since graduating from Dickinson. Since my time as president, Sam has contributed nearly $18 million through Dickinson Forward's campaign for scholarships, ensuring our students with the greatest need and those most impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic have the support they need to achieve their goals at Dickinson. In his lifetime, Sam has donated more than $40 million to his alma mater. His philanthropy includes, but is not limited to, an endowed scholarship that has helped hundreds of students attend Dickinson and will continue to do so in the future, as well as the Durden Athletic Training Center and the Sam Rose 58 and Julie Walters Prize for global environmental activism, which brings sustainability thought leaders to campus each year. Sam's giving, as he has noted, serves as a vote of confidence in Dickinson's ability to change the lives of students through our useful liberal arts education. Sam, I know you don't want this, but I'm gonna ask you to stand up, and I ask everybody here to stand up and acknowledge this wonderful Dickinsonian. Sam still has some game in him. He's probably going to kill me for that. <laughs> and finally, as we move this college forward, I want to talk about another initiative that we've embarked upon that is very important to me personally. It is the civil dialogue across the curriculum campus and community initiative. The strength of Dickinson comes from how we embrace the differences between us. We bring people together from all corners of the globe with wildly different life experiences and beliefs to live and learn. We must embrace those differences even further and be willing to explore them with respect and courage. Dickinson must not succumb to the road rage mentality that characterizes much of society today. We must reject the echo chamber that so many are living in. We will welcome diverse opinions on this campus and we will take the time to learn how to discuss and even debate the most contentious subjects productively and respectfully. The Dickinson experience calls on us to move forward with an expanding mind, always seeking the truth, whether obvious, challenging, or at times uncomfortable. This is not common in our world today, and it is decidedly not easy, but it is imperative let us adhere to Winston Churchill's maxim, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak, and it's also what it takes to sit down and listen. Being a Dickinsonian is a lifelong journey. Trust me, it does not end when you walk down the stone steps behind me on Old West. Trust me on that. I ask all of you who love this college, as I do, to continue to discover your place here. I invite all of you, students, parents, alumni, and friends of the college to consider this question. What is your Dickinson experience going to be? You know what it's been until now, but look ahead and consider what your relationship with Dickinson will become. One of our students said uh, recently, uh, last week when he was when he was profiled in Dickinson today, that those who come to Dickinson should not be visitors, they should be owners. The answer, the answer to what you're going to be, what your Dickinson experience is gonna be is up to you. Be owners. Never ever in my life did I think that I would be a college president. It still amazes me. I'm humbled by the way that this community has embraced me, as well as Beth. I accepted this honor because I saw it as the opportunity of a lifetime, and it surely is. It is that for me and more. I am privileged to lead a place that I love, 
the place that propelled me into the odyssey that has been my life. So today, my friends, I am challenging you. This is indeed our time. Join me in charting our revolutionary future and launching us ever forward. I promise, as you can tell, that it will be an exciting journey. Thank you again. Thank you all.